The sun has just come up and I've yet to go to bed. I stayed up all night. I listed 112 items. So that's good. It gets me closer to being at a thousand by Monday night, which is my goal. Um, but I do know out towards the main road, there is a bunch of stuff to pick through as far as like trash. Um, they've been putting a little bit out at a time and I thought maybe they were just like organizing their home, but it looks like, like yesterday, it looked like they were like preparing to move. So I think they're actually moving out of that house and there were like two heaping piles. So I'm going to drive around the neighborhood and then I'm going to head out to the main road and see if we can take a look at what's out there because, I mean, with that much stuff, there has to be something, I believe. Um, and then I'm going to come back and crash and actually sleep for a few hours before I get up and do another hundred and something items. Uh, super determined to hit a thousand items in my store, which... <laughs> It's kind of a bad problem to have, but I keep selling items too, so like, <laughs> I'll get like three items listed and then an item will sell. It's not that bad, it's more like 30 items listed and an item will sell, so it's not, it's not horrible, it's just like that number that I have to list is ticking up. Um, but that is a good problem to have, so. Um, yeah, let's go see what we can find. I got my new vintage Liberty camo pants on. There's one pile, and I got a whole nother pile. like torn up books candles Oops. I wear gloves, but I've never been a big glove wearer in my life. Why start now? It's creepy. jeans. Just a red tab. Those are a little too rough of condition. Those are probably clean up. 
Oh, that's a shame. That one's way too bad. are pretty cool they're just so bad I wonder if they took the rest of the good vintage shirts to the Goodwill it's one of the good things about looking through the neighbor's trash is I know what kind of donations I can clean that up for sure I'm gonna take this to the car and then check out the other pile I think I've decided I'm going to take that better looking Planet Hollywood shirt. I don't know if that has any value, but I can wash it up and if somebody wants it with a couple stains on the back, they can have it. If not, I'll wear it. get run over. I'm going to have to look that up just to see. out of curiosity. Some sippy cups. I don't know if those have value, but some of that vintage baby stuff that's almost like Tupperware. to see if I can get that clean. Hilton, no, Hilo, Hawaii. That was a little too far gone. There's some plushes. Nico tableware.
do it. It just looks like some bubble blowers. That looks weirdly familiar. Almost like silly putty, but not quite. That's good for parts. Just so wet. whole lot of these I can put that with. to save the stickers for my daughter. Vintage Toys R Us ad. Might be able to clean him up. It's a cat dog plush. Tommy.
Franciscan. I don't know if I'll be able to get those clean or not. They were like a speckled glaze, so. One of them's got a little chip. Now I gotta find a way to get this to the car. All right. So, one thing about trash picking is like if I go to Goodwill and yard cells that are mostly clean. Those items might sit for a few days, especially the Goodwill ones. Sometimes those stickers stay on there for like months before I get to them. But if I'm going to trash pick, um, those things get processed immediately. Like I get them out of my car as soon as I get home and they get washed as soon as I get home. That is just for some cautionary precautions. Um, you know, they've been sitting outside. They could have been someone's basement. You're literally picking trash. So I think it's better to clean it. Uh, but I figured I'd kind of give y'all the down low on how I process some of these things. So like anything that can be soaked, like a lot of things from Goodwill or yard sales, um, I will spritz them. This is my water, Dawn, and baking soda solution. I spritz them all over. I give them a wipe down with a good, uh, well, I'll let it set for a little bit. And then I give a wipe down with a good hot cloth. And then I brush them out with an old man brush, which is like got fine bristles on it. Um, but when I'm trash picking, anything that can be soaked will be soaked. So if it doesn't have electrical components, um, you know, anything plastic, anything, any of the stuffed animals will be soaked. Any linens or clothing goes straight into the washer. Like those two pair of jeans and the Planet Hollywood shirt are already in the washer right now as we speak. Um, so... Some advice is that if you're going to soak items, especially anything from like the 80s or 90s, maybe even early 2000s, um, start with like a lukewarm, almost room temperature water. Um, because some of them are not like color fast and the colors will run like immediately, especially if they're things that haven't been played with much or worn much. Um, so I start round one with a like room temperature water i'll let them set for a little bit i'll drain it and then i'll fill it up with a very hot water um and then i start either wringing out the plush animals so that they can dry and then i can finish processing them or i'll just hand wash anything that's you know plastic or whatever um then I lay it all out to dry. I don't put my stuffed animals in the dryer until they're like a 90% dry because it can mess up the stuffing. It can mess up a lot of things. Um, and they just won't look, they'll look like they've been run through something. And I put them on a low heat cycle. Um, and I don't keep them in there the entire time either. Uh, basically just to get them dry all the way through, but I don't like messing up my plushes, especially if I put work into them. Um, like these two have electrical components, so I can give y'all kind of an idea of how I handle my regular plushes. Now this one will get doused a little extra. Um, because he does have some, like, it's all surface staining. I wouldn't call it staining because it's probably going to come off. It's just sur surface dirt. Um, but I take my solution and I fill it up to, I don't know, I think it's like 24 ounces, this bottle. And I put in three teaspoons of baking soda and then about four drops of Dawn. When you're using Dawn, you don't have to use very much Dawn at all. That's why they clean baby ducks with it. Um, 
and if you use too much it will leave like a residue or like even if if there's too much baking soda it can leave like a powdery sort of thing on it and you don't want that so I stick with the lower amount uh, the good thing with like the baking soda and Dawn combo it is it also helps like with any odors that may be in it um, if it's really strong odor you're probably gonna want to soak it in like baking powder and it's gonna be a little bit longer process um, we won't go over all that right now because these are these don't I mean they smell off like they've been out overnight in the dew but they don't smell dirty dirty um, but normally I would give them like a little bit lighter these cheap Walmart spray bottles are gonna be a death for me um, a little bit lighter spritzing like normally my normal stuffed animals just get sort of more like a misting but he does have a little bit more dirt on him now that I've like sort of spritzed them all over, he's just going to sit there and he's going to get to where he's like just barely damp. And you don't want them all the way dry, but you don't want like to where it would get crusty or anything, but you don't want it to still be wet because it won't clean the stains. The baking soda in the Dawn will help like lift dirt out. And if it's still wet, you're going to end up just rubbing the dirt right back into the plush so you don't want to do that um this guy i'm not really sure if i can salvage him but oh he works i think this is like a for reals or something he has a little bit of a ding on his head here and this is one of those felted toys like flocked but with sort of the, the newer flocking so we're gonna see but I would say, if this is going to work, I'm trying not to spray it straight into the electrical parts. Um, I'm going to have to be real gentle when I'm wiping it clean. So he'll sit there for a while too. Um, and I'm going to put, as I'm touching these items, I will put comps up because I don't know what any of this is worth. I would reckon we have at least a hundred dollars here and some people would be like well is it worth doing all this processing and cleaning well first I, I like immediate gratification so cleaning items is sometimes soothing to me but also if i just pulled at least a hundred dollars out of the trash in all of like 10 minutes and it takes me about an hour to clean and an hour to list and ship i mean even if it took me three hours to do everything that ends up being like $33.33333 per hour. And that is totally worth it to me. Um, especially just finding cool things that were otherwise going to get, you know, thrown away. I mean, these are like vintage, iconic toys. Like what? I don't even know what this guy is. I don't know. It's 2007 Hasbro, but it's like a Transformer Death Star... Darth Vader. I mean, this gotta be worth something, right? And I don't know if he's supposed to make any noises or not, but his battery chamber looks cool. Oh, well, he's still, he's already working. Pretty good. So I just gotta wipe him off and fold him up. And I have no idea what he's worth, but I would imagine he has to be worth like $10, $15 at least. I mean, that's Star Wars, 2007. I'm talking like 17 years old, just sitting there. Um, so yeah, obviously like little plastic things like this, like magic erasers are my friends. And if there were any scuffs, which these really don't, like these actually, they were dirty a little bit, like dusty in the trash, but these are actually in really nice condition. Like they don't look like they've been used. And again, I don't know that these are even worth anything, but this one, this one's actually Tupperware. Um, but some of these vintage sippy cups, one, they're better quality, more durable. You can't find them anymore. 
and two, they become nostalgic to people. And they want to see their little toddler drinking out of the sippy cup they drink out of. Um, I have several of these, like a whole bunch of them, that I'm about to lot up. Uh, so I can just add this one. I feel like this is a cheaper one, like maybe a, a McDonald's one. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it. But if I'm doing... No, it's not McDonald's. It's legit. If I'm doing... Uh, a lot of them anyways and I might as well just put it in there because those are actually fairly valuable um, plates again any plate is gonna get magic erase I can't believe I found Franciscan in the trash and this is like some sort of fern pattern I'm not familiar with this one Clean it up pretty good because it is a speckle glaze, so it is going to have speckles. It's just some of these speckles aren't supposed to be there. Um, yeah, these I'll probably like wipe them down this time, and then when I refill this up with like a super hot water, I'm gonna throw them in there again just to get any like leftovers making real pretty just in case they are mildly valuable because one of them does have a tiny little chip on it but usually if you have like a lot of four of them or, or like a set one of them having a small chip like not a big chunk but like a little tiny one flea bite as they call it um, isn't gonna really hurt the value all that much because especially like Franciscan, certain like older ceramics that are this type of mid-century pottery, it, uh, it chips easily. It's one reason it tends to go up in values because people want to replace it and they chip fairly easily. Now the glaze is always nice. These pieces, that's one of the things I think people like about it is it doesn't tend, as long as you don't throw it in a dishwasher or something, it doesn't tend to scratch up as bad. It's got a, they tend to have very high gloss glazes on them. Yeah, these cleaned up nicely. So we got four little Franciscan saucers. Anyways, okay, so those will get like a secondary rinse. Now plushes, like I said, I'm going to rinse this guy out. Rinse this guy out. And in a second, I'm going to fill this up with super hot water and a little bit more baking soda, a little bit more Dawn. And I'm going to let them sit in the really hot water, but that first go around is just really just to make sure that they stay color fast and to get the any surface dirt off um, and then I do a little shorter shorter soak in the hot water just in case it needs to be sort of disinfected in any kind of way um, Clinique vintage Clinique is pretty collectible I don't know what this folding brush is worth but it is like in pretty nice condition so I don't know. I mean, I would imagine I could get like $10 for it or so. Um, those are always cool. Now I'm curious to see how clean this hat's going to come. Before I put it in hotter water, I'm going to kind of rub some of this like into the fibers gently. Sometimes you can rub a hole into something. But it's already coming pretty clean and once I go to dry it I'll just shape it you know, as it's drying a little bit and just sort of rubbing that into the fiber will help keep any of the dirt from setting in there and pull any of the stains out all right I'm gonna drain this. I'm gonna 
cut the camera for a second while I drain it and fill it up so it's not so loud. And then I'll be back to show you the other things that we got and to finish processing most of the way. So, got this filled back up with hot water. I am keeping this like purity patch because it's red and a lot of the like 80s and 90s, even 70s reds can color or color run. So I am keeping that slightly above water. Um, just trying to kind of get the rest in the hot water. Um, I did scrub down my bluey, not bluey, but blue. Um, and he's looking a lot better. There's a couple little places that were a little bit harder to get out. Um, so I spritzed them again and they're already getting a little bit better. So I'm pretty sure he's going to come mostly clean. Now it's like, I think this is, yeah, 1997. So this is like original Blue's Clues. Um, and with things this old, if there were a couple small or faint spots, most people aren't going to care. You just want to note them in your listing. But the cleaner you can get them, the better. I mean, you're already working on them, so you might as well. I am going to just see what happens with this bird really fast before we look at this other stuff. I might not clean them all the way, but I'm just curious if it's even going to be possible. Another good thing about that, like, baking soda and Dawn is, like, so much of the dirt just comes up to the surface, so you're not, like, scrubbing most of the time. And he's coming pretty clean. A little bit of his blue's coming off, so I don't know what it'll look like when he's dry. But it's a good learning experience because I've never cleaned a flocked bird. The older ones, I mean, I wouldn't even try to clean the old, like, 50s, 60s. Yeah, he's getting there. There's definitely a little rubbing is going on, but... I think we can get them decent enough. Um, so, as far as what else we have, um, I did get these Monster High stickers. I'm just gonna let these dry and give them to my daughter. She does a lot of like collaging and sketchbooking and journaling, so, uh, and she collects Monster High, so I'll give them to her. I think my dog's trying to steal the plushes. Um, then we got this Angry Birds Knock on Wood. And I actually already have one of these listed. This isn't one of the super valuable Angry Birds games. But if it's complete with no box, because the box is kind of... The bottom's fine. The top is... I mean, when it dries, it might be okay. But... If it's complete, I can sell it complete with no box, or I can part it out, because these get lost, um, and then this thing breaks sometimes, so if I need to, I can just part it out, um, but I will see if it's all there. Angry Bird is becoming more and more valuable. Then we got this bin, which I've already sprayed this with Lysol, um, full of wooden blocks. I'm pretty sure the wooden blocks are fine in here. They look very clean. Um, but some of these older, these aren't super old, probably like late 90s, early 2000s. Some of these go pretty well, but I should be able to sell this for something. Um, and it's a pretty big set, so I'll look into that and see what I can. But also, this Sterilite carrying case was worth it in itself so even if I redonate the blocks then we got this like 80s caboodle um, this is another one of those that's super easy to clean up with like a magic eraser 
be a little more careful around the graphics because sometimes if they're already worn a little bit they'll come up easier with a magic eraser there's already like a pretty vast improvement going on so I won't bore y'all and clean the whole thing right now but you know all of like 10 minutes and this thing will be practically new it was sold at walmart for 11.93 back when they had stickers but i want to see what's in here too there's no telling um it's like a little jewelry makeup case i don't know if i can do anything with that we got a I don't know if that's even a doily or if that's actually, I think that goes around your neck, like sort of like a scarf. So we may be able to sell that, you know, and I can honestly, actually this might sell pretty well because that's like, I'm pretty sure that's almost completely full. So, and that's like vintage for sure. I know they don't make this like this anymore. This was made in the USA too, so it's probably late 70s, early 80s. And a penny. So we're already making money back, 1987. So, a few extra little things in there. And I'll be able to get this cleaned up really well. Some of the, capoodle, the capoodles were doing really, really well. Then they stopped doing as well. But these pastel colors are actually still a little bit hard to find, so I think I'll still be able to do decent on that caboodle. Um, and then the last thing that I got is this Ericsson cell phone, an AH628. <laughs> I wonder if the antenna pulls out. Nope, it's not that old. Um, but some of these older cell phones will, will sell for something. I mean, it's a little piece of electronic history. So I'm gonna clean up just a little bit. I have no idea if it works, so I'd have to sell it as is, but I'll look it up and see if that is worth anything. But I have my cup of coffee cooling down to temperature where I can stand it. So I'm gonna drink that. I'm gonna finish what I can here and let these like air dry. Clean up this guy a little bit. Curious to see what he goes for. And I guess that's all. This is what uh, trash picking processing can look like. It doesn't always look like this. Now I know you are probably at some point when I actually get comments and followers uh, gonna comment on why didn't I pick up this or that or trash or whatever. Like those books are all damp. Anything that's too damp, I'm not getting. Anything that's slightly mildewed or molded, I'm not getting. Anything that, like those little shampoos and stuff, I wanted them so bad, but there were mouse droppings in there. And I can't do that to people. I, I shouldn't be doing it to myself, even looking at it, but I can't do it to people. Um, metal stuff, I would love to cash in the metal that I find because I'm already there picking other things, but I have a little small car that is actually my dad's right now that I'm driving. And the next car I get is either gonna be a Subaru WRX or a truck. And I haven't decided. It depends on what kind of midlife crisis I'm going through at the moment. Um, <laughs> One, I really want one I can really use. So it may be the truck before the car, but um, that will be what I get next. And if it is a truck or even a van or an SUV, maybe an SUV, uh, then I will look into um, metal, but there's not even anywhere to even take it to close to here. So um, that, that will be another challenge I'll have to face. So I hope this helps you guys to understand, you know, how to clean some things or how to create a system. I hope you enjoyed finding these things with me and I will see y'all next time.